Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Geeks in Space. I am Rob Commander Taco Malda, and with me today I have a plethora of very fine geeks. Gentlemen, your pictures are now on the screen. Would you like to say your names? Sure. Uh, I'm I'm Chris, Colonel Burrito Demona. <laughs> I'm Nate, and I don't think you know what the word plethora means. And I'm Robert <laughs> Churro Roseboom. <laughs> From now on, I wish to only be referred to as El Guapo. El Guapo? <laughs> so first of all, I, I'd like to take issue with Nate's assertion that I don't know what plethora is. I bet you he doesn't know the proper use of decimation. It's beating to death one-tenth of your uh, your legion, right? All right. Well, as long as you said it's half, <laughs> right? Because people are always like, Somebody's oh, they, they were Roman decimated. Tree. And I'm like, so they're all dead. Right, right, exactly. I'm like, that's not what decimation means. Yeah, it's true. It's like the saying "running running amok," you know that that means murder, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. not just things out of place. But anyway, welcome to Word Talk, with Rob, <laughs> and Nate, Rob and Chris. It's time Today we're going to talk about some words. Hey, everybody. We're prepping for the SATs. You know, I didn't put it on Taco Zone, but apparently SAT scores are down nationally. But that's because more people are taking the SATs, so it's not that huh. getting dumber. So, so are are we at the penultimate ranking of SATs or the ultimate <laughs> ranking? <laughs> Hard to say. The uh, penultimate is the one right before. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then a desultimate would be after you killed ninety percent of the other <laughs> people taking the. It's SATs. that last guy. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Hey, um, so, all right, I put a really cool one up about the farmers uh, who live uh, outside of uh, what, Baikonur uh, in Russia. And apparently it's just a thing that happens pretty regular that uh, Russia ex expended Russian uh, lower stages of rockets crash in their fields filled with yep. incredibly toxic chemicals. And that's yep. just something you deal with. Well, you know, it's the price of living in the most beautiful part of the steppes, you know? <laughs> you take Devo, your... Devo made a, a great song about it called Space Junk. Yeah. I wonder uh, if they're, they're issued those, those guns from the earlier episode, you know? Like, well, you need those uh, weapons to uh, defend yourself from the angry farmers. That's <laughs> <laughs> really happening. They're like, oh, not another Soyuz capsule. <laughs> or, you know, the heavy metal looters, which I'm sure yeah. there's tons of running from around Tony with the reindeer herds. <laughs> well, there was a story floating around. This was 20 years ago on Slashdot, right? Where uh, somebody snuck into one of the nuclear powered like stations in the middle. Like it was just like a relay station, unmanned, and they stole all the nuclear material and <laughs> a bunch of the hardware. And it's like, but why, you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, weapons grade critical stuff, but you're all going to die. You know, they're like, yeah, but we got some cool stuff, but, but not before they make the best science fair project ever. Right. Yeah. Well, the article, look, look at my fist. The article did talk about how, uh, you know, scavenging the metal and stuff off of these rockets is a thing. Yeah, I'm sure it is. There's a, if Mad Max has taught me anything. Mm -hmm. There's a, I can't remember what part of Africa it is. I think it's actually Somalia that they have the same thing with old freighters. There's a certain stretch where old freighters get beached a lot and there's no way to get rid of them except for people come and by hand, they cut well, apart these freighters. Uh, and well, this, the, the, no, there's all along the, the coast there, you know, there, it's actually a really big business. Where they break down the metals and and sell them off, or, you know, it's it's important. It's like the end of a circle of life for mm -hmm. some metal composting. It's it's basically ship composting. Yeah, you know, you know, we're all those heavy metals. You know, they they started life in space, man, in the heart of a dying star, and now they're just being ripped apart by people. I feel like I should be playing the guitar. <laughs> Some prog rock. We're gonna need the depot. Now they're just embedded in dying hearts here. So <laughs> the service <is> complete. <laughs> Man, that hit a little too close to home today. <laughs> sure did. Uh, 
So uh, be careful if you run a Mac uh, and you run Google Chrome. Because run apparently there, there is apparently uh, an update now, which is roaching file systems. My favorite part about this story is that it started off like yesterday or something with uh, all of the, uh, it started off as like a Hollywood avid bug. Because apparently mm. it was like all these video editors were be the first ones to notice that it was happening. Uh, and it was like mm. apparently some sort of weird crisis amongst people who edit live video in Hollywood. But then over the course of the following day or so, it was like, no, it's just Google Chrome and it's wrecking file systems. Who knows if it's fixed? Chris, do you know if it's fixed? So so I, I don't know uh, much about this at all. I saw it like everyone else yesterday. And I was like, so I don't run a Mac because I like using all the keys on my keyboard. Um, like that and, Windows key. You that? like that Windows key. Well, yeah, Windows lock on my gaming machine. Locks it. Anyways, uh, Windows L, you know. Um, but aside from that, I just think, Okay, so I know I'm gonna sound like a Unix weirdo. Like what Unix allows a user space program to write to var in that manner that it would be able to destroy the file system of the operating system? Isn't that a little weird? Say, I think it's fair to say that in 2019, that the Mac is a Unix system, like with the with the finger quotes. It still technically has a lot of attributes. It's, of it. it's just weird to me. Now that said, I mean, so maybe we screwed up. Probably we screwed up. Maybe we sent off some fix. I, I would hope we we already you know pushed it out. But yeah, I just I'm like, how does this bug even happen? Like, what and what are we doing hanging around in VAR? You know, it's so weird. It's just weird. Everything's different now, man. Alien. You're, you're supposed to blow up everything in temp. Everyone knows that. Right? I say Orange everything in, in mount. jail, you know? <laughs> we we just put it in proc. What, what what else are you doing in proc? That's where I keep my home directory. It's proc <laughs> slash taco. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the postmortem on this one. Uh, it'll be interesting to see wh what happened. And, and there's that part of me, I'm like, this is probably just some weird extension that they're all using, but... You know, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, we're, we're not above making mistakes, you know, at all. No, it it specifically has something to do with uh, like some file system security thing that's unique to the Mac. Uh, that apparently, I mean, Google Google has some posts on it, but I don't actually care enough to read up on it. I just think it's really funny that a, a web browser is blowing up file systems in 2019. All right. Um, oh, so so do any of you run a Mac? Have you seen this bug in the wild? I, you know, I'm not. I, I am running a Mac, but uh, the only thing that my Chrome does on this Mac is literally this phone call. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. And and is this Mac the same one you had 20 years ago? This up. is this is my this, left, this computer. This is my like 2011 MacBook. Right. Uh, it is literally the most powerful computer that I own. Actually, that's not true. The streaming that's not true. That NUC that you gave me yes. uh, is uh, probably more powerful than this Mac by an order of magnitude. Well, it's important that we stream well. You know? That's right. Uh, so, all right, this is the weirdest one for me for the day. Uh, Amazon has released the Echo Loop, a smart ring. Guys, everything's different now. Eek. Well, and they're going Ooh. over the 900 megahertz band, so it's the same band, uh, uh, frequency band for, for those radio nerds out there. Uh, <laughs> it's the same band that the old Microsoft smartwatch used to send its push notifications on. You know, it's a, it, 900 megahertz is not a very high bandwidth band, no. it's, but it's very broad, so you can only put a couple base stations in and cover a huge, you know, area, right? So, yeah. The thing that I didn't get is what is it connecting to? Uh, I think the loop is um, connecting to uh, the framistan. It's a little tympanic membrane that you put your blinker fluid in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're trying. <laughs> <laughs> no one I, cares. It's a smart ring, Rob. <laughs> Therefore, it yeah. doesn't matter. There's just, never I, been a smart ring that mattered. I, I had that and it interfered with my miskatonic uh, recabulators. I, I couldn't oh, get your work out of You know, the, the recabulators, I mean, how are you going to reach your uh, your Apache trunk? 
I, you know? I just look forward to a time when they have a evil hacker in a movie who's got one of these on every finger, like the like the Mandarin, <laughs> you know, controlling time and space. Answering phone calls like a motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. And then he gets a phone call and they all vibrate. <laughs> you know? And then he shoots electricity out of his rings. <laughs> no, they, they announced a lot of devices, though. They have the their version of the Bose uh, frames. You know, with the speaker in them, uh, and and one of the one of the articles said, now you can have Alexa sitting on your face. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and then they have the uh, God. What was the third device they have? Um, they had the ring. They oh, they they, they they have an earbuds for 120 bucks that have Alexa, so you can have Alexa in your ear. All right. Sure. This says that the ring is Bluetooth. Oh, it's Bluetooth. That's really a waste of everything. No one's ever going to use it. Actually, people will probably have it. Like, like Jeff Bezos will give them away at his conference or whatever, and people will be like, sure. "Thanks, trash." You know. I actually, I've I've often thought that a ring is actually a really good idea. Uh, yeah. For a, for a lot, like it's a good like it, it's similar to the form the the form factor of a watch. But I don't like physically wearing a watch. But uh, culture dictates that I have to continue to wear a ring. Uh, so I'm used to wearing a ring. You, you're thinking of making the Echo Loop your wedding ring? That is so romantic. That's right. No, no, no. You know what this is? Jeff's asking all of us to marry him. Oh. You know, he had his divorce, and he's just yeah. lonely, guys. Yeah. So he, you know, the Amazon Prime Day special is you get to marry Jeff. You know, so if it's you like buy a weird episode of Sister Wives, then <laughs> except for it's everyone, like, he wants like ten million people to marry. This is a very lame prenup. Yeah. It's the weirdest prenup. You know, the terms of service on the loop, and it ends up, <laughs> and you agree to marry Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> I like I like the idea. I mean, there's been a lot of different devices where people try to put a button physically on you somewhere. Mm -hmm. Just a button, like a confirm to confirm things. Yeah, anywhere that yeah. you can conveniently <laughs> have a button. Uh, I feel like a watch could be the way to do that. I don't think that this would work. It looks kind of clunky. Well, you know, they just canceled the dash button like a year ago. Right, so they don't ship those out anymore. Yeah, those those were not ergonomic at all. I was trying to wear that on my ring. It just <laughs> oh, you, you, it's supposed to go in, not on. Oh, oh, okay. And that, and that is that is why I was getting all that paper towel all the time. Yeah, it was originally called the Amazon asterisk. You know, because <laughs> careful. <laughs> they tried one the that inserted the wallet. <laughs> They tried one that inserted in your shoe, but it made walking all sorts of fucked up. You know. Well, you kept on ordering more more shoes because every time you step, it would. You know. I got to. I had to get my ten thousand steps yesterday, but I just don't have enough room for paper towels in my house. Right now. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. I like. There's no screen. Uh, so I mean, like, and the, it's not that different, I suppose. Than uh, like, Apple kind of is trying to do it with like you can tap your ears for the earpod yeah. thing. Uh, uh, I assume the Google Pixel Bud things do the same thing. Yeah, so, now we've got an interface. Honestly, I, 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 I hate to be like the anti-technology person, but like, I, you know, naming something. Uh, Amazon buds. After we did the Pixel buds, H have we used the word buds enough, or is it like a is it like a marijuana callback? I'm trying to figure out why people like calling it buds. It just sounds weird to me. And like I mean, because they've been called earbuds now. That's that's the form factor. That's like complaining that my headphones are called headphones. Well, I really hate that everybody calls headphones headphones. I mean, why are they called right? headphones? They're not they can go on other parts of your body. Mm -hmm. you know, and what if they're the kind that goes around behind your neck? They're neck bones. That's right. Oh. The bone, the bone vibrates. Also, none of them are waterproof. Like none of these devices are waterproof. And I'm like, you know, give me IP67. Give me IP68 for something okay. you're wearing outside in a ring format. You know, it's... the ring isn't waterproof. That seems foolish. Well, maybe it is. Maybe I just didn't. I mean, you also have an operated no one's ever going to buy it. I mean, from 1987. 
What I mean, happens like, if you accidentally find your hand in a big bowl of oatmeal or something? And <laughs> then the rings you know, could be I, ruined. I wonder if the uh, Amazon digital S car go fork with Alexa, <laughs> you know, turns out no one's ever going to buy it. So it doesn't matter. Literally, literally they'd be like, oh, loop. You know, they can make a hundred of them and just like never make another one again. You know? So uh, Facebook. Uh, it's ah. announced, uh, Horizon, a VR. Did you see the commercial? Is this the sequel to Second Life? This is Second oh, Life no, virtual totally reality, worse. man. <laughs> but no legs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they showed uh, the not actual VR footage commercial of people <laughs> interacting in Horizon. And like, uh, you, you, there's a woman, she's standing in the middle of like where a table would be. And her husband's like drinking coffee or something or bringing her breakfast. She's like, you know, uh, and she's got the headset on. And it's just, oh, yeah, no legs, huh? That was the problem with Second Life was legs. Well, so. <laughs> Either not enough legs, or way too many. <laughs> it turns out if you want to vomit like that in VR, look at your feet. Because they're never synced up with where your feet are. Mm. And so it makes you all freaky, right? So they're like. We'll solve the problem. No legs. <laughs> you know? Tank treads. They should have just given everyone tank treads. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, my I prefer some legs. sort of some sort of gyroscopic ball, like a Tyson, like a Dyson vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh we well. So like there was. Do you remember? Do you remember Piers Anthony? He did the AMA with us. That was just such a disaster. Um, he was a science fiction author. Um, mm, yes, I'm yeah. very familiar. <laughs> You're familiar with yours, Anthony. He wrote a short story or or a long story. I don't even know. I just remember he went into excruciating detail about a race of aliens that have a ball as their foot, and that's how they can move around. And and the reason it was excruciating is he he described the mating patterns of the ball. <laughs> of course, people, and one of the balls pops out and they merge their ball together and get it going really, really fast. And I'm like, now I was maybe 14 when I read this and I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Chris, when BB-8 really loves another BB-8. Uh, <laughs> I know this is going to sound very strange to you, but this is what happens. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good that you realized you've read the most erotic thing you'll ever read, so there's no sense of carrying on, you know. <laughs> this is it. This is the pinnacle. Yeah, no, that, was the, uh, that was the moment where I stopped reading anything by Pierce Anthony until the, the dumb question and answer thing that we did. It was considered the Fifty Shades of Grey of its day. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey aliens? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. mm. uh, I'm just going to mute at this point. I mean, I can't top that. It's for the best, Chris. Uh, let's see. Rambo Last Blood is coming out, uh, or is out. Pretty pretty not excited about that one. I don't think anyone cares. It's got 27 Rotten Tomatoes, so you know it's uh, mm. really going to be a bad. class act. More than, more than I expected. <laughs> Uh, Rob, have you seen Midsummer? I have not. I heard it's really good. Netflix. Yeah. Is it good? I, I did watch Heredity. That's the uh, the horror movie by the same folks who came out. It came out a little bit before this. Um, Midsummer looks like it's basically just the, sort of the Wicker Man. If you've ever seen that movie, <laughs> the bees, yeah. the bees. Well. You know, there's there's the old Wicker Man, and then of course there's the the Wicker Man yeah. we don't talk about. The the old Wicker Man, the old Wicker Man was yeah, pretty pretty kooky. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'll I'll watch almost anything with Nick Cage in it. I'm I'm literally right now paused halfway through rewatching The Rock, which I hadn't watched in probably 15, 20 years. This is a fine film. No, it's I need to. Oh, it's, it's actually hard to watch. Um, no, there was the one he did with the What's Your Bucket uh, next, which was like about time. That's a good one. Yeah, that, that, that was that, that was, was okay. Based on the Philip K. Dick one. Yeah, yeah, but he made like two of the exact same movie. I seem to remember. You know, kind of like uh, the butterfly effect. That turns out there's like yeah. four of them, and they have the same plot. 
just different actors sometimes. It's really like Hollywood does some weird stuff sometimes. Like, like you wonder, like, hey, who is this for? You know? Have any of you seen Mandy? Like, like. I know a Mandy, and I've seen her before, but. I the know. movie starring Nicolas Cage called Mandy that came out like six months ago. No. I know okay, so this, girl, this is actually. A good wife she would be. Rob, this is for you. This is, you should go watch it. Uh, it's gonna kind of blow your mind. It's like a heavy metal drug trip, uh, but like sounds fantastic. <laughs> but with like a, a weird horror flavor. But it's like really like the visuals on it are really amazing. It, it, it's I, I assume it was shot digitally, but it's really really processed to like look like old film. Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and say this is a good movie, uh, but it's a great 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 piece of uh, thing. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. A no, you seriously should watch it, Rob. You especially will actually enjoy it because it is straight up insane. And the finale, like you and I could probably talk for like a half hour on just the last 10 minutes of that movie. Okay. Seems like we have an assignment for Rob. <laughs> all right. Well, like, watching the Mandy, Mandy movie. All right. I got it. Got it. So I, I don't really have a big tolerance for bad movies anymore. I used to like that stuff. But I have to say, Nick Cage, that guy, he works his tail off. You know? Yeah. I admire that level of just like hustle. You know? Yeah. And then like, you I, there's a guy who's been emailing me for the last I don't know, 10 years completely off his rocker. And it's like I'm one of like a thousand people he emails his ridiculous stuff to. But boy, is he productive. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm like, is this just right. Nick Cage? Rob, you remember the guy that uh, for like a year emailed me and I only oh, would yeah. ever reply with one word. Yeah. yeah. That guy would write like these two or three thousand word essay emails and I would reply every time with things like, yep. when? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> How? Yeah. yeah. Sure? <laughs> Maybe. Nick Cage is that person, but mysteriously related to Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, uh, and then you go, you go back like, and you look at things like Raising Arizona, Leaving Las Vegas, and you're like, holy yeah. shit, you can actually act incredibly. Oh, he's, he's a solid act. Vampire's Kiss. Yeah. He's also <laughs> that, had that a really bad. good run of just being in kind of really cool movies, uh, like The Rock or like, uh, uh, what's the one where they crash the airplane into the hotel? Con Air. No. Con Air. Those are not mm. good movies. Yeah, not I, I, think, I think good is maybe... They're, a, they're, they're good movies. He, he's had a good run. He's had a number of good runs. You know? Yeah. And he was well, like a baby like, uh, in Godfather 2 or something. Or that Sofia Coppola. Yeah, yeah. Sofia Coppola is in Godfather I, I get those two mixed up all the time. Can't well, they're like cousins. Part. You know? They're like first cousins. Yeah. Really? Well, that's why that's why uh, Nick Cage is a big deal. Kind of like how Gwyneth Paltrow is Steven Spielberg's niece. Ugh. It's like, oh, oh, that's why you got to do this. Oh, uh, oh I, I get it now. It all makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's see, Rob. I am steamrolling through Letterkenny, and I cannot get enough. There's, I have so much joy in that show. It's it's a fun show. It's a fun show. Did you see the thing I posted in the channel about uh, George Lucas being upset that his ideas weren't used more yeah. in the Star Wars movie? I was, I was reading about that uh, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, you know, they didn't use my, my idea of an alien that's kind of racist. <laughs> well, weren't they, like, supposed to be, like, you were supposed to go and live in the mit mitochlorian realm or something? Wasn't that the story? Like, it was nutty. Oh, it's so bad, you know. And it's like you realize that the people who are keeping, who are editing him, and and holding him back in Star Wars were the true heroes. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like the it. original storyboards from the first Star Wars had like you know Han Solo was like a really he was he was basically like a weird alien, you know, Jar Jar Binks type. And I'm like, well, I'm glad they changed to uh, to to our Han Solo. I mean, the, yeah. the the real story of Star Wars is uh, the story of Gary Kurtz. Uh, and uh, if you ever read up on that dude, uh, that's a whole weird thing. Uh, but he was the he was the keeping it in check. Uh, oh, yeah. It turns and, out left, uh, to, left to his devices, Lucas would have made a film about 
galactic gut health <laughs> and, <laughs> and that sort of thing you know because that's what those that's what the force would broke down into basically the microbiome you know? or, yeah how much of the force bacteria do you contain in your guts? We, we found out it's just by eating a lot of leafy vegetables and good good fiber, you you know, you increase yeah, your Yeah, originally it wasn't use the force, Luke. It was eat some force juice. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's like you know, the the green morning drinks mm -hmm. people yeah. Yeah. milk. Yeah. Milk, that was it. Mini Gloria <laughs> milk. <laughs> Which I assume came from banthas, so maybe banthas are just like uh, you oh, know. Oh, like, I figured, I figured Jawas. They look dirty, like <laughs> like you know what I mean. I'm sure there's a lot of ferment and, fermentation going on with Jawas. I, so. I mean, so I, how I, do I do want to plug my wait, adult wait, website, milkingjawas.com. So Jawa juice. Jawa I, I'm going to decimate your Jawa discussion. Okay, so so I have a picture in my head. So there was Splinter of the Mind's Eye. And there was kind of there were kyber crystals, and there was the dark crystal. And the dark crystal was about a big crystal, but they had a little shard left, and they were going to bring back the the the, the light side of the force with that little mm. splinter, which really was a kyber crystal, which was in the splinter of the mind's eye, which was used as an amplifier of the force. So it's really like the agar petri dishes for the midichlorians. They feed on it and they grow and they make the juice and it comes out as blue milk and you drink it and, and you balance the force. But splinter of the mind's eye was like never canonical, man. Yeah, well, neither was dark crystal for the Star Wars canon, but I'm just saying they're connected. So the, are you suggesting the that the Dark Crystal and Star Wars are a shared cinematic universe? It's clear to me that they are. That makes sense. I, that keep makes in mind, sense. I've never seen the Dark Crystal, and I'm never going to see it. <laughs> well, that's your loss. I'm going to put up the goodbye slide now, gentlemen. Yeah. Goodbye. Assuming Thank I can find right. the right clicky buttons. Thanks for listening to uh, episode 383 <laughs> of Geeks in Space. I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda. Thank you to my guests. Gentlemen. I'd just like to apologize. This is Chris Bona. I'm out. <laughs> I, I'm going to subscribe to your, your newsletter, Chris Bona. <laughs> and I'm going to go do some intense research on how exactly one milks a Jawa. Oh, I can help you with that. Excellent. <laughs>